Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're so excited to be here. I'm Holly and this is Rachel. Good morning. So it's been a few weeks since we've been here. I got to go on a little trip to Ohio to uh, spend some time with some friends I haven't seen in 20 years on Lake Erie. That was pretty awesome. And we've been milking our cow. It's been really awesome. Um, you have to get used to you know, going out there every morning and every night to milk her, and it's really good discipline, and sometimes <laughs> yes. you wish you didn't have to get out of bed, but uh, we've, it's been really fun, and I've always wanted to be able to milk a cow and stuff, so I've been really enjoying it. We've been making all kinds of cheese and butter and yeah, cream ice cream. <laughs> Rachel's so butter fun. was awesome. So uh, we've just been... Um, Super blessed with a, an abundance of milk and a great harvest in our garden. Uh, we've also been making pickles out of the huge crop of cucumbers we got. <laughs> we planted a ton of Armenian cucumbers and they're nice and mild and have a tender skin and make they're, delicious They're super pickles. pretty too. They have little frilly edges. <laughs> yes. They're, they're like flowers. So nice. So, um, so it's been a great and eventful couple of weeks. So today we're going to use some of our abundant milk to That's make right. some yogurt. So That's right. I think we're ready to get started. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Holly, and this is Rachel, and we are a part of the cooking family. And uh, today we're going to show you how to make homemade yogurt in your Instant Pot. Um, it can kind of seem like a complicated process, but it's really not. It's pretty simple once you uh, have an idea of what you're doing and we're going to show you how we do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we have a whole bunch of Guernsey milk from our cow and that's been such a fabulous blessing. And right here we've poured in half a gallon of uh, milk and you can use any kind of milk, store-bought milk at the store. Uh, avoid using high temperature pasteurized milk for regular yogurt. Uh, the reason we got a Guernsey cow was um, because they make golden milk um, because they don't, their bodies don't digest the beta casein, uh, carotene. beta carotene, and so their uh, milk is nice and golden and the butter is amazingly golden. I had some butter here earlier. It's super yellow with no added colors or anything. It's very amazing. So. Um, when you're making yogurt, the first thing you want to do is uh, pasteurize it yourself so that any good or bad bacteria that's present in the milk will be inoculated to allow for the yogurt cultures to grow properly. And also it helps uh, denature the protein so that it will coagulate. Because right. you can make raw milk yogurt without pasteurizing it, but it will be runny and it'll be more like kefir mm -hmm. to drink uh, and it's just not as appealing if you're wanting like thick creamy yogurt. That's right. So. That is exactly right. And we've tried that with raw raw yogurt, yeah. and we ended delicious. up making it drinkable because yeah. um, it's not the thick stuff that we are used to. Um, so I'm going to adjust my mic just a second here. Okay. So when you're making yogurt, you're going to take your regular milk and you're going to pour it into your cold instant pot insert. And uh, some people like to even slosh around a little bit of ice cubes in order to make it nice and cold. And then you're going to put your Instant Pot on uh, the yogurt setting. In the Ultra, you're just going to dial it over to yogurt and press yogurt to select. And then you want the temperature to be on high to boil. It says boil. It's not actually going to come all the way to a full boil. But that's going to pasteurize your yogurt. And if you... Um, if, if you have the ultra, you can cycle through. The medium is 107, that's the incubation temperature. And then on low, that's for a different product. Um, I don't remember what it's called. It's like a uh, fermented Asian rice. Yeah, I can't remember what it's okay. called. Okay, so you want that to be on high for this first step where you're gonna inoculate the um, yogurt and then you're gonna press start. And then the Instant Pot is gonna slowly heat this up. It's not as hot as saute. If you put your milk in there on saute, it probably would scorch the bottom. I mean, it surely would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because that's a rule of the Instant Pot. 
Don't put dairy in when you're gonna pressure cook because it's gonna burn on the bottom. So then you're gonna whisk it carefully and you want the temperature to go all the way up to 180 degrees. Um, and you're gonna whisk it a lot, constantly while you're going. So um, we actually already had it up to 180, which it's not right now, it's cooled off just a little bit to 160. But you're gonna wanna whisk it until it goes all the way to 180, and we're gonna skip that step because we already did it right before it was on camera. And how long would you say it takes to get up to that temperature normally? Like okay. 20 minutes? -ish? It should, so for a half a gallon, it should take about 25 minutes. Okay. Um, we have a large family, so um, we usually do a whole gallon at a time. We reduce this to a half a gallon for you. So um, it takes, for a whole gallon, it takes about 50 minutes and a half a gallon about 25. So after it reaches 180, then you're gonna take your Instant Pot insert out and you're gonna place it in a, a cold water bath. Hold on just a second okay. with that ice. I want you to look and see this temperature as it drops really, really fast once we put it in this cold water. And the temperature of, I'm gonna go ahead and add the ice now. You can do this in your sink. You can do it in a, um, a sink with a stopper or you can put it in a large bowl. Doesn't matter either way. That's great. Just be careful to, if you're doing it in your sink, not to let anyone wash dishes while you're doing that. Or right, something. don't get any or water turn on into the faucet. your yogurt. So the temperature that we're trying to cool the milk down to is about 110, between, a hun between 105 and 115. So I'm gonna put my little marker on 110. This is an analog thermometer that's for uh, cheese making and dairy making. Um, there are lots of great thermometers available on Amazon Digital or analog. I like analog. Don't really know why. But digital can be really easy to read if you're going for 115. And there's also a great thermometer at IKEA that uh, you can set to beep when it reaches a certain temperature, although I don't think it works going down. Mm, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna whisk your milk until it gets all the way down to 110 degrees. Meanwhile, while you're waiting, um, Rachel's gonna show okay. you how we um, get the measure out our yes. starter. So when you're making yogurt, you have to put in a mm, starter. And some people will put in actual like powdered cultures and it's just some bacteria that, a good bacteria that grows in it and eats the lactose and makes it thick and delicious. Um, if you buy uh, plain yogurt at the store, you can check on the ingredients and it should have live and active cultures in it. This one has like L. Bac bacillus, S. thermophilus, like a bunch of different cultures. And um, so you can either use a powdered culture or this. We like to use this. It's um, but if you make your own yogurt at home, you need to use a fresh starter from the store every time or else eventually the yogurt that you've made will get weaker and weaker and eventually it just won't thicken at all. Yeah, you can use a couple of generations of your homemade yo yogurt, but it eventually will kind of putter out. Okay, I'm doing about two tablespoons of yogurt for this half gallon of milk that's right so when we do a whole gallon we do a uh, four tablespoons which is equivalent to a quarter cup yes so okay, that's great. Great. okay. yeah uh, and then i'm going to temper it with a little bit of milk here because that helps it this like get to the same temperature as the rest um so anyway do can i borrow the ladle uh, absolutely and you can certainly, someone asked if you can use goat milk. Wait just one second. Okay. It's close to 110. It's probably 112, so you could okay. go ahead and do it. So she's just going to ladle one ladle of milk in and whisk this yogurt in. So this and this helps help. it stir together better so you don't have a um, big clump of yogurt and all it moving takes a second. That's your, already good. In your bowl of milk. And we're at 110. Here. Awesome. Okay. okay. Here. So now I'm gonna, I need actually a towel. Oh, okay. So someone's gonna grab me a towel. 
because you don't want to put the wet right. insert into your instant right. pot. Yes. Yep, you okay. can take that away. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So we're going to dry off the outside of this. And because it'll, uh, it'll sizzle, you <laughs> put it back in. Okay. Are we ready and to then, add yeah, the you can go ahead and okay. add your starter. Um, the fresher this starter is, the better. So, um, if you have, if your store doesn't carry plain yogurt, you can use like vanilla, but you want to avoid having a lot of sugar in your yogurt because um, the healthy yogurt bacteria is um, made to feed on lactose, and that's what it feeds on in the milk. And so uh, unhealthy bacteria is going to feed on your easy sugars to digest. And so if you add sugar to your yogurt, then you could grow unhealthy bacteria because it's kind of more lazy and right, yeah. it's going to enjoy sugar. So um, I don't add any sugar before uh, we serve the yogurt. Um, and so we add our sugar at the end and any sweeteners at the end. Okay, so we've poured our cooled milk back in the Instant Pot. And then um, we're going to go ahead and set this up. So we're back on the yogurt setting, but we don't want it to boil again. So we're going to change our temperature down to medium. And you can see on the Ultra that the temperature is going to be at 107 degrees. And so that's right there between 105 to 115, which is great. And um, it's going to ferment and do its culturing perfectly. Now, uh, this is how our family likes to do it in the large batch. But if you like to um, make yours in individual jars, I'm going to show you how to do that. So you start at this step. And what you would do is cool down your yogurt just like we did. And then you're going to ladle your milk into your jars. I already, down in my uh, Instant Pot insert, I put water, uh, just about a cup of water, and my uh, trivet that came with the Instant Pot. And then I'm going to carefully ladle the milk right into my jars. And I'm going to leave just a little room on top for some toppings. And then we'll wipe this off and place it back in. And you could lid these up if you want or just leave them open and then put a lid on after. Uh, it's going to be the same difference, basically. So if you want to um, make your yogurt in jars, this is how you would do it. So what are the guidelines for how long to let it incubate? Would you incubate, it? yes. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, and answer about goat milk? I, I don't know. Okay, someone uh -huh. asked about if you can use goat milk to make yogurt, and yes, you can. You can even use um, vegetable milks to make yogurt. If you do vegetable milks, you're going to need some um, thickener added to it, and so it might have a little bit of a different texture, but goat milk, cow's milk would be great, and you can do it all the same way. So I think the minimum for yogurt is eight hours to just sit, right? But you can go longer. I think you can even do six, but okay. it wouldn't be as thick. Okay. Um, eight hours is, is what we uh, set ours up for. And um, so it's a great thing to put on before you go to bed and then it's ready in the morning. That's right. Then it's ready in the morning. It'll still be warm. Right. It won't be ready to eat for breakfast right. that morning. Um, but eight hours is a good place to start. And then if you like your yogurt more tangy, um, then put it on for a little bit more time and just experiment with that amount of time. Some people uh, culture theirs for... I've heard of 24 hours. I've heard of 24 hours. For Trim Healthy Mama so that all of the lactose is gone. But okay. that seems... I've never tried that, so that would be pretty tart. Right. It would be. But the bacteria, the culture of yogurt will... Basically, what it does is eats the lactose in the milk, and um, it eats all the sugar right out of the yogurt, which is why it ends up tangier. Mm -hmm. Okay, cold start yogurt is a completely different uh, process, and I'm going to go ahead and um, 
I got a couple things to say before we go into cold start yogurt. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the thermometer out of the Instant Pot, get rid of the ladle. Um, while this is culturing for your eight hours, you want to put a lid on it so it helps maintain the temperature and nothing dries out. You can also use the lid that came with your Instant Pot. If your uh, seal has a little bit of chicken broth or yeah. dinner flavor, <laughs> uh, it's a good idea to have a yogurt ring on hand like um, like this one from Hatrigo is a great one if you want to have a different color so that you can designate one for just plain. Um, any lid, this is just a lid off of my biggest soup pot, um, but if you don't have a lid that fits your Instant Pot, you can use the regular Instant Pot lid and just place it on top. It doesn't even have to be really closed, but it can but you do want your vent um, open, right? I, I think open. It's not going to come to pressure. Right, yeah. So, uh, and then this one, on the um, model, the Duo that just has the buttons, I'm going to show you what buttons to press. So you're going to have it on, and then you're going to press yogurt. Okay, and then in order to cycle through, if you're going to boil it to do the pasteurization, you're just going to press the yogurt button to cycle through the different uh, phases. This 24 is the Asian one. And then the one you want for yogurt is gonna be the one that says eight. But if you wanna add your time, you can add, use the plus sign or the minus sign to change the time on that. Uh, but we're gonna start with a standard eight hours and let this go overnight. And on the original, even older uh, Duo model, it doesn't have where you cycle through. Instead, you press the button called adjust, and then that is what cycles through less, normal, and more. So the less is the lower temperature. That is a 24-hour fermentation that we don't use for regular dairy milk. And the normal is the eight hours that you can adjust up or down with the plus and minus buttons. And then more is the boil temperature where it is gonna pasteurize your milk to 180 degrees. And it usually will reach 180 degrees in one cycle because it does have an end. But um, when we've done a whole gallon, it takes a little bit more time. So I'll just either turn it back on to boil or this is only if you're gonna be right there, right there, there the whole time. You can put it on saute on low and whisk constantly. Um, but that's only if you're gonna be right there no distractions. Awesome. Because you don't want to scorch your yogurt. Ready, show and if the you fish. do, um, if you do feel any sticking, really when you're making yogurt and you're whisking, don't scrape the bottom. Okay. Just leave anything that sticks to the bottom, leave it on the bottom. Okay. okay. Ready to show? Uh, I was going to talk about, just for a second, about cold start okay. yogurt. Okay. Um, cold start yogurt, uh, you don't do that stage where you inoculate the milk. And um, when you're doing cold start yogurt, you are going to use ultra high temperature pasteurized milk. That's basically milk that is shelf stable. Uh, it has been uh, heated to a temperature of about 280 degrees, which kills all the bacteria. So the whole, all that milk is completely sterile until you open it. So you want to open a brand new container of the ultra high temperature pasteurized milk. You pour it in, you add your starter culture, and you set it on the eight hour time. Uh, and the only reason you can do that is because it's completely a sterile environment. Otherwise, um, if you use regular milk that is not ultra high temperature pasteurized, that has some, some good and some bad bacteria that still survive even though that's been pasteurized by the milk factory <laughs> so um, so cold start is a little bit different and um, I'm sure that you can find cold start recipes online lots of great ones um, okay so I'm gonna show you what is gonna what this yogurt is gonna look like in eight hours and here is um, the pot, I use this awesome lid also by Hatrigo. 
and it's a silicone lid. It's a fantastic tool to have on hand for your yogurt. And you can see, so our milk is not homogenized. So what you see on top is the yellow cream from our Golden Guernsey, but you, when you take a knife, you can see how that separates. And you can see that the milk has uh, thickened up and turned into yogurt. So then the next step, once you wake up in the morning or in the afternoon, come home from work and you have your pot of yogurt, then the next thing you wanna do is chill this before you stir it. And then that allows uh, the yogurt to set up properly so it can be nice and thick. And um, then when you stir it, uh, here is what it looks like. So this is some we've already made. And it is, I have already stirred it and it's nice and thick. It's thicker than drinkable yogurt. Um, and it's very creamy and very tasty. So this is regular yogurt, and then now we're going to show you how to make Greek yogurt. One of my favorites. <laughs> One of my favorites. So I love this yogurt, um, and it's delicious, but, um, but I like it a little bit thicker. So if you like a drinkable yogurt, um, you can um, pasture it or incubate it for less time. I think the six hours. Okay would be thinner or let's see would it be a bad idea to use uh, regular milk from the store and not pasteurize it because when you make raw milk yogurt without pasteurizing it it's all it's drinkable I would not um, use regular milk from the store and just not pasteurize okay. it because it's already been pasteurized okay. and it could have uh, bad pathogens okay. in it that you don't want to to culture in your instant pot. You could add um, milk. even, could you, you could milk? probably add a little bit of milk. Someone asked how to make drinkable yogurt um, from regular yogurt. I mean, it's almost, but you could add a little bit of fruit juice. You could add milk, anything to kind of thin that out mm -hmm. just a little bit. Um, we also blended it up, um, the raw milk yogurt in the, the Vitamix with some Mango. strawberries or mangoes. We made a little yummy. And you can just add a little so bit of liquid good. to thin it down. So, okay, to make Greek yogurt, here is what we're gonna use. You need, Greek yogurt is only just strained yogurt where you have strained out the whey. So uh, you can see that there's whey on here. You can see it almost looks like water uh, that has separated out from the milk. And that is just what whey is. And if you stir it in, it just that's right. If it you just stir makes that it in, thin. it yeah. just incorporates yeah. and it gets creamy like this. And then if you want to make Greek yogurt, you take a mesh strainer, just like this one. These are available on Amazon very readily or even in your grocery store. And then a piece of cheesecloth. And you're gonna lay the cheesecloth over and then spoon in or ladle in your yogurt before you've even stirred it. So I'm just going to ladle this in and I'm going to do as much as will fit in my little strainer here. That's really thick. This I is nice and thick. I think that's thicker than that other bowl you showed. Thicker than this? Yeah. Well, um, the because bowl that I showed earlier, I did stir okay. in the way okay. that had already separated a little bit. So when you're making Greek yogurt, you're just going to let this sit for overnight, would you say? Yeah, in, four to in, six in, hours. And you or, can put it in your fridge or yeah. on your counter. You can do overnight as long as you want. And the longer you let it set, some people will let it even set for 48 hours. And that makes uh, yogurt cheese. And it's so good. It's almost like cream cheese. Yes. Only it's kind of tangy, so it has a lot of flavor. That's and right. And uh, last time we made it, um, we put it in olive oil and herbs and salt and let it sit in the fridge for like a few days and it was so good. So we good. spread on yeah. crackers. Mm -hmm. So that's if you want to let this, this very same thing, um, if you just let it keep on sitting for 24 to 48 hours, that's when it'll make the yogurt cheese. But if you just want to make Greek yogurt, do this overnight, four to six hours, even eight, and then just whenever it's to the thickness you like, 
then you can take it out and eat it as Greek yogurt. Uh, Greek yogurt has a little bit more protein in it uh, than regular yogurt, and it's nice and thick and creamy. So when you set this in your fridge, you do want to strain this in the fridge, and you'll want to cover it like um, with either plastic wrap, or you could take your Instant Pot lid and set it on there just to keep the air from drying out the top of your yogurt. So this is the way to strain the yogurt. And then we also have this awesome tool um, where we made some Greek yogurt last night. I'm going to set this aside. Uh, so this is the Hatrigo Greek yogurt maker. And it's pretty awesome. It's um, been pretty easy to make. It has a nice lid that keeps it all contained. And then watch how thick this is watch i could not thick. believe it when i okay so this just comes right out and it's like thicker thick almost as thick or as thick as sour cream or even like pudding or maybe <laughs> even a little thicker and it tastes so creamy and delicious you can stir it i just scooped it right out and if it's a, if it's more thick than you want you can just scoop a little away from the bottom and put it in but I like it yeah. nice and super thick. Yeah. Okay, so see how thick this is? Look down in, and you can see how the yogurt that's left is not um, sinking down at all. Mm. And so then you would just want to um, take this out and put it in a regular container so it doesn't continue straining. Okay, the way that this works is um, you take the yogurt, just like we did into the mesh strainer, so you'll take this out, and you might even want to drain. See how that whey is separating? You can just drain it a little bit, and you just scoop that right into here, just like we did into our cheesecloth. And then um, look, so this has sat overnight, about 12 hours. And so here, you can see all the whey that has separated off. And what would we do with the whey? Okay. There are so many things you can do there with it. There are lots of things you can do with whey. Um, Google is your friend, but it's acidic. We've been using it on our garden. We've had a lot of whey from our cheese making. And it can, uh, we've been, tell them, you can tell them about okay. it. Okay. So I um, <laughs> we've been having some powdery mildew on some of our squash plants, and we found out that whey is a really good fungicide. So we've been spraying it on with a spray bottle just on our squash plants. And, and tell the kids, douse it. <laughs> and we have like, plenty. So, And I've heard that it's uh, tomatoes really like it. Um, I heard of a lady who just dumped, put it on the ground, like watered her tomatoes with it, and they loved it. And they Any grew Any acid-loving plant is yes. going to love whey. And you can, I don't know how this kind of whey would work out, because, but you can make whey cheeses. That's right. Um, what you can make whey ricotta or a Scandinavian cheese called mietjost or something. Uh, and you would boil this down if you were making that. Um, but since this is from the yogurt, I don't think there's a lot of cream, like, cream in it. So, right. Um, and don't pour it down your drain because it's like, big companies are not allowed to just dump their whey because it's bad for the environment. Um, it's probably not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt you, drain, but you should. But it's great for your plants. Um, dogs love it. Dogs, cats, cats love it. Pigs, um, chickens. Yes, pigs and chickens <laughs> love it. That's right. Um, let's see what else. Uh, there is even a recipe for whey lemonade. Yes. Like you can sweeten it and then drink it. Mm -hmm. So don't pour it out. Use your whey. <laughs> um, and so uh, this also, so I normally do not like unitasker tools in my kitchen because they take up a lot of space. And they and only do one only thing. Only do one thing. So, but we have loved this because, first of all, you have a large container with a lid. This um, also has cool measurements on the sides. Uh, this goes, this holds eight quarts total. Two so gallons. it's a nice large container you could put your potato salad for a picnic or anything in. And um, you can use it for lots of different things. Yeah, we use Leftover it. soup. Uh -huh. But we also used it for straining. What did we strain? I think oh, it was ricotta. Yeah, or Ma Miriam or strained cheese. her cream cheese in it. Yeah. Okay. And so anything you need to strain. That's right. If you, you have 
um, zucchini, shredded zucchini, or cucumbers, cucumbers that, that you're, you're salting and uh -huh. letting drain off. Anything that you need to strain, it's a nice handy container. It's not awkward at all. Uh, you know, it's not going to roll around like your, right. um, <laughs> like the, the like mesh strainer mm -hmm. uh, would. And it goes right in the fridge. So uh, try out this awesome Greek yogurt maker. And did you get a taste? I did, taste? and it awesome. was so good. Good. Okay, so there's the Greek yogurt, and I meant to serve up a little regular yogurt. And we were going to have our little girls come in and show you how they like to make a little yogurt parfait. They are so excited. They were, Hannah was saying she's so excited for lunch because we're going to eat yogurt parfaits for lunch. And she's <laughs> like, yogurt and berries and granola, it's yeah. all my favorite. So, and we have a big tray of stuff that we like to put on our yogurt. It's pretty much mix and match however you want. Hi, Lydia. So um, I really cool. enjoy letting the kids flavor things kind of however they want and experiment with how things taste. Um, one of the things they like to do with yogurt is put in a little lemon oil that's, um, that you can, it's therapeutic grade so that you can um, eat it. Hi, girls. So this is Hannah, Lydia, and Miriam. Um, uh, I was gonna, I interrupted myself. Um, another thing we like to do is sweeten it with stevia uh, or put a spoonful of jam in it. That's one of the favorites. Uh, the kids love to just mix in a little bit of vanilla to make a vanilla flavor. These would not all necessarily be at the same time. And then of course honey. Greek yes. yogurt with honey is so good. So are you girls ready to make some parfaits? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so can we have the glasses? Yes. Where would you like them? Is this okay? Yeah, right that's here? great. All right. Um, another thing that I have found is that the whole milk yogurt um, tastes better, and so your body doesn't crave as much sugar with it. So... Um, so we've used less sugar because it's whole milk mm -hmm. and they're, the kids are getting the fat that they need and um, they don't need to add as much sugar. So I would encourage you to try uh, buying the whole milk yogurt. It's hard to find, honestly, but you can. Or make your own out of whole milk and then um, just see if, if, you're, if you don't need or want as much sugar with it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this yogurt in, then you girls can layer it up with some fruit and some granola. That is so yummy. What are you gonna put in yours, Hannah? Um, I'm gonna put in granola. And so you can sprinkle some on top of your uh, yogurt. Yeah, here Lydia. Can you tell us why you like the yogurt? Mm -hmm. Well, I love yogurt because it's so good. <laughs> so here, why, here why are the blueberries, is it so good? girls? Ooh, yeah, blueberries. And we'll let you do yours at because the second. Because it has all kinds of fruits and stuff. <laughs> you were really excited about the granola this morning, right? <laughs> You're saying, I can't wait till lunch. <laughs> do you want to put some more granola in? And then we'll put another layer of yogurt in. How's that sound? Sure. Do you have those cute little spoons? Those, Ooh, yeah, uh, little Ikea spoons. I love spoons. those little Ikea spoons. Okay, are you ready for more yogurt? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can also do this into little jars and do it the night before and have it ready in the morning. Uh, for a quicker breakfast. Having a hard time reaching. Can you reach Lydia yeah. to put more yogurt in? I don't want to drip it in her hair. Are you going to eat one? Yum. Mm. Okay, Miriam, I think you can come okay. on. And you guys can add some more fruit and some more granola, and then you have your parfait ready. Add, you can add a little bit more berries and stuff, girls. Mm. Here, Here's Miriam, we'll pass the, the yeah. berries over. So, Miriam, tell us about your food anatomy book and the anatomy of a parfait and all that stuff. We need, okay. we need some granola. I'm going to get close so she can have the microphone. Um, 
so it says to um, put the yogurt first and then the fruit and then the granola and then the granola and then I mean and then the yogurt more yogurt and then granola and then fruit. So why don't you show us? Yeah show us that order girl. So Miriam got these awesome books called um, well, there's one called Farm Anatomy, one called Food Anatomy, and one called Nature, Nature Anatomy. Nature Anatomy, and they are such sweet books. But uh, in the Food Anatomy book, there's the Anatomy of a Parfait. So Miriam loves to make a little parfait with layers. Yummy girls. Um, I love getting the kids into the kitchen because I feel like. For one thing, it equips them with skills for life, um, and it also allows them to enjoy food more and just enjoy being a part of the process of family life, of cooking, uh, being together as a family. You get lots of quality time in the kitchen when you're working in the kitchen, don't you, Miriam? Um, some of our most fun times are even when we're cleaning up a sink full of dishes together and laughing and joking and um, having conversation together as a family. So, uh, and then we also love to go and eat the food together. So we just want you to remember that you can enjoy cooking and eating great meals together. Um, we would love for you to go to our uh, Facebook page at the cooking family, um, facebook.com slash the cooking fam and like us on there. Also, our website is thecookingfamily.com. Uh, we would love for you to sign up for our email and you can also receive a free uh, Instant Pot mini course on there if you'll sign up. And um, you can like us on Instagram. We've been doing some fun stories on Instagram of our pickle making and our cheese making. So. Um, we hope you, that you'll uh, like us and share us and follow us and all that stuff. Um, and we're just so glad that you've joined us today. And that uh, next week we'll be back here at the same time. That's 1130 Eastern, 1030 Central. Um, and we're, uh, we're so glad you've joined us. And you, your family, can cook and enjoy great meals together. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.